I want to address you people who are back home. Please learn when to call people who are overseas. No matter the country they are. Before you want to call our numbers, look at your time. The way you people treat some of us is just like we are slaves or something. 3 a.m. Someone is sleeping. Their phone is ringing. Brrring. Hello, hello, hello. Is this Sister Honorine? Yes. Vita, what is it? Oh, Sister Honorine, please call me back. Call me back. I don't have credit. You don't have credit. You are calling me to beg for money. You don't have credit. Besides, you called me at 2 a.m. I would think that it's an emergency. I will call Vita. Vita, what is it? Sister Noreen, I just wanted to tell you that um, I don't have money for this. I don't have money for that. Please send me the money quick, 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 quick. Oh, I have my Jangi on Saturday. Before I continue, Jangi is something like a meeting that we um, we have in my country. People go there maybe every Sunday, every end of the month. They have a certain amount of money that each person is supposed to bring. And then at the end of the year, they spread the money or they divide the money. My good people, this is your boy, Golden Boy. Yes. Today, what well, I have an interesting story. I have an interesting video. I think it is, it is going to help uh, to many people who who are in a in a relation who are in a who have gone through family relationship. That is a mother, father, son relationship. And. I don't want to make you bored. I just want you to get dive into this video. Then uh, we'll just be discussing as time goes by. Whatever you save, that's what you get. They call you to tell you that they don't have money for Njangi at 2 a.m. for crying out loud. Do you people really think about us? Do you people consider when you start asking for money, when you start demanding for all these things? I'm like, Vita, I don't have 50,000. I will send you 10,000 francs. You send 10,000, they do not call you. They beep you and you call to say, what is it? You say, um, I wanted to tell you, thank you for the money. I, you people, wallahi, you people, you people, you people are trying wonders. I send you money, you cannot even call me to tell me, thank you. You beep me, you flash my phone. I still call you and you say, oh, I just wanted to tell you that, thank you for the money. And you do not even, you, sometimes you say, oh, but the money was small. It was not enough. Lord God have mercy. Do you know how much is my paycheck? Do you know how much is my phone bill? Phone bill in America is not the same like back home. That maybe you recharge your phone is okay. Here, if you, your, fee, your, your phone bill comes monthly, if you don't pay it, they disconnect you, and the next thing, credit bureau starts calling you. You people don't say thank you. Every day you are asking for money. You are asking for money for graduation to make big party. We send you money, you say the money is not enough. How many bottles of drink will you buy? See, we are suffering here, okay? We are suffering here. We don't have that kind of money that you keep asking. Mama, you people have exaggerated it. Yes, some of you, our parents, you guys have exaggerated it. Soon it has become the one that you people sit in the house and say, Oh, since 10 years ago that Honorin went, since 10 years ago that Michael went to America, all kind of people have come. They have gone back. Oh, Michael has not even come. She does, he does not care about us. He does not do this. He does not give us money. Oh, he has not built us any house. He has not done this. See, you people don't know what we are going through here. It is true that you guys sacrificed for us to come here. It is true. It is true that some parents sold maybe pieces of land and maybe invested one way or the other for us to come here but it is not a guarantee for us to live under stress mama and papa and brothers and sisters we have brothers in the family all their life you work your money you give to them they eat they do not invest it in doing anything but when someone wants to complain about you they are the first person to sit down and write a whole chapter of the things that you are not doing they forget the fact that you send the money on monthly basis weekly basis they do not do anything about it you are the one suffering the, the, what the lady is trying to talk about is called a uh, black uh, black tax black tax is something that has killed many family relationship imagine you are a firstborn person and uh, 
you are a firstborn son or daughter then you all of a sudden you become successful in your in your family you become successful otherwise let, let's today let's we want to talk true especially to the uh, family from the african side do you know the black tax is uh, is where uh, your parents see that you are capable of taking care of them now your parents push all the sons all the daughters all her children or your brothers to take care of you to take care of them and it has since made uh, most of the african communities to become poor how because uh, you find that most of these black firstborn children they get depressed because uh, uh, is someone who is working and maybe let's say is earning uh, uh, two thousand dollars per month then you can imagine that this two thousand dollars he has his family he divide is subdivided to the he sends some money to ma to a, a, a mom or a dad then you go to to children he pays school fees for him for himself then he goes to his brother he also pay for school fees then at the end of it you find that you you are you don't have you don't have anything you don't have anything in your pocket you can't even buy a shoes you can't even take care of yourself so this is how the black tax has made bad has made impact on some of their some of the african families i don't know i have not heard of uh, other families but i think that uh, this is something that i thought that maybe we should discuss about it because as this lady is trying to say that uh, the moment he arrived in america the moment he went to european countries all of a sudden people think that he's having money she's having money i mean she's she's she, her life is better that's how the african perspective has always been and they always think that the moment you travel to outside your country outside africa ah you have made it in life you have made it at all so they tend to say that uh, because you have made it now i'll be asking you for money he'll give you a trial and if you immediately send something for uh, for 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 him or her uh, she or him began begins to ask you for money frequently of which it is really really frustrating most of the uh, most of the people the thing i have come to realize also is that um, when we, we as africans we move to other countries eh? we don't tend to uh, to give these guys how life in america or how life in uk or how life in canada is real you don't give them the real perspective you don't tell them how life is in terms of season let's talk about the weather there's there's extreme cold weather in that in those countries but you can't show them you only want to show them where you think that uh, they need to see you don't want to show them the bad side of uh, of life in in america you also have to know that uh, this side of uh, european countries they have they are bad but they have bad pictures which are not always shown on media they are not always shown on media but because now you made it to other countries you can't even tell your parents how you you did eat you did eat in the morning you did uh, you, you, how the life is very very mad now as much as you are complaining uh, as the lady is trying to complain about how she frequently send money to uh, to his friends or parents she also have to know that uh, the moment she dies these are the people who will take care of her body these are the people who will take care or who will, who will form a, a chama or group to help contribute money for her uh, illness or maybe something you also have to know that when you are in those countries something anything bad can happen to you anything bad can happen let's take a look at my aunt who after she 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 went she was rich she went outside uh, kenya and she was living in tanzania then all of a sudden this lady uh, passes we don't know anything about her she passes she she's dead 
we receive a call from Tanzania that they, they, are, they, they are sending a parcel. They are sending a, a black parcel. And now, let's say about that lady, my aunt. They are sending her through a parcel so that we can receive her through the border. Now, who, who will take care of this, uh, the, this dead body? Who is going to take care of this dead body? It is the family. That's why I always say that uh, when you make it in your life, the only place that you can save your money, the only place that you can save your income, you, you can save your future uh, income is through your family. How? When you take care of your mom, when you take care of your brother, when you take care of your sister, when you take care of your brother, of your uh, father, these are the people who will take care of you the moment you are in a low, in, you are at your low moment. Okay, uh, I'm not saying that it is exactly the same because uh, most of the families are toxic. Some of the families are toxic at all. But I'm trying to say that the moment you get rich, the moment you have money, please don't isolate yourself from other uh, members, family members. Because you also have to know that life is a turnaround, life is a circle, something may happen to you, something bad may happen to you. That's how I always say. I, I don't think that uh, the moment you make it, that you make it throughout. But you also have to know that life is a mountain. There are some lows, there are some highs. There are some lows, there are some highs. You also have to know that. So when you take care of your brother, take care of your uncles, it is something that uh, it is not. It is not. Uh, it is not something that is going to affect you. It is going to affect you uh, mentally. But at at the end of it. There's something that you need to know that you are saving for your future. It is like a saving. According to Africa, it is like a saving. When uh, you get uh, you get money, you get uh, work, you also have to make sure that your brothers are, are, and are, are in a good position. Otherwise, the moment this family gets into depression and you are, in, uh, you are capable of taking care of them, I'm telling you the truth. The, the society will take you as a bad person, will look at you as a bad person. Even if the family was very toxic, you, the society will take you as a bad person. And do you know what? The moment you get into trouble, the society won't help you. That's it. That's according to African cultures and the tradition. How I have heard about it. But there are but there are some uh, seasons that uh, you find that uh, I had a brother. Then my brother passes away. Then how am I going to do this? I need to take care of his family. That is a uh, take care of his wife, uh, children, and uh, and uh, yeah, take care of his wife and children. Yeah. So those those are the things that I I, I also think that. Uh, it has led to uh, many disagreements because uh, you find that you also have your family. You, you want to take care of your, uh, uh, your brother's children. You pay for them school fees. You pay for them. Uh, you buy for them food. You pay for them rent. That is something that is uh, it is exhausting at all. It is making your mind, mental health uh, become very very poor. And it is uh, okay. In short, I'm trying to say that uh, when you help helping your helping people, it does some extent. There are some extent that you need to help a person. When uh, you give a person uh, alcohol, the next day you should not give him alcohol, give him money to buy alcohol. At least you should try to give him, tell him that uh, these are the places that you need to fish. Okay, Don't give him fish daily. If you give him fish daily, uh, one day you will come and fish in your pond. I also thought that uh, it should be a concern to those people who are outside, those people who, who I don't know if it is happening in our community only, but uh, I wanted to talk about what I have heard from my friends' experience that uh, there's something that is called uh, witchcraft. Witchcraft can happen in many forms. There are some times that when you, you are high, many people envy you and they want to take you down. They want to put you at your lower level. They don't want good for you at all. They don't want you to prosper, prosper in your life. And that's how the many families, many villages are, never, are, are not developing. It is because of that called something called witchcraft. Witchcraft, someone, your aunt or your uncle can go to sit, to a seat and find you and make sure that you lose your job. That is something that I have experienced. At the same time, during the ceremonies, 
you don't know you are someone who is kind hearted i'm just giving you some some pathways some ways how these people trap you and make you remain poor there are some times that uh, the family have events at home then you move to your families but because you meet one two three people at your villages and they ask you for money then you give you you give them money you they ask you for money for to buy something but they turn they turn around and they don't buy something and say they take it to some of them, I don't know their witchcraft people, then that money which you held in your hand, eh, they, they go and turn your life around. So when you move to town or when you move to where you came from after those ceremonies, you become very, very extremely poor. Your wife, your problems, problems start following you right, left and center. So these are the things that has made many African families to remain very poor. There are also some, I, I'm coming from, uh, by the way, let me introduce myself, I'm coming from uh, Siaya. Siaya is, uh, is in, in, in Kenya, that is in one of the counties in Kenya, and it is one of the, I think that's one of the poorest can, counties in Kenya. Yeah, so you'll find that Siaya yeah, has this the smallest roundabout. But do you know what? When you go to their villages, when you go to some of the villages, you'll find that someone had built a house, then that house didn't finish at all. Or that house finished, it was finished, it was constructed until it was finished, but the owner of the house is dead. So you can imagine. The person who, who started building a house, that house didn't finish. He either is either very poor, was turned poor, or he died. Another one is maybe he finished the house, but the house, the owner of the house died. Or the owner of the house is in many associated in many problems. So that's how the village life is. They don't want you to prosper in life. And if you prosper, they'll make sure that they turn you around. So the reason why I brought this topic is because of this lady who she was complaining of how these friends from Africa usually, or uh, relatives from Africa usually ask for her uh, for money, even at midtime. Now, you also have to know that education, education is something that uh, people don't learn, they have not learned about time. They don't know when, when you're 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 weak, you're walking. Also, they just want that's their character. They feel that when I ask you for something, I will keep on asking you every now and then I will be giving because you are willing to give. So, in short, that when you are you are you have money, uh, these are the solutions. When you have money and you intend to buy land in Africa or you intend to buy land in Kenya. Um, especially to the, my places that I've said, I'm not trying to demod, de, demoralize you not to buy land. But uh, when you are in Kenya and you want to buy land, yeah, make sure that you follow the government procedures. Okay. Then another one, make sure that you you are followed up how the community behaves. Go find someone. Go find a, a, a person who is a. Who is, uh, who is drunk, drunken person, or a chief, and uh, she ex he or she explained to you what usually happened to this guy. community. There are some times that this society or these villages, you find that people are not developing, people are running away. Like, for example, take a look at our village. People are running away. When you have money, you just go and buy land somewhere else. Otherwise, see, the moment you try to buy, buy, build in that land, I'm sure you'll go down six down feet. That's the saddest truth about African life. It is not a tradition. It is not. A, it is not a, a, a. It is not something that is very natural. But it is because of how people behave. And there are some also ways that you need to follow when you are building a you are building a house. What I'm trying. What, what I'm trying to say is that. Um, there are some traditional way that the moment you go against that tradition, people tend to believe that you go down pit or you die. Uh, there are some reasons why this, these are the things that are, as usually happened in villages. And if you take a look at our, our, our village, 
you can't build uh, a permanent house with, without a be, before you build uh, a small jikon, a small kitchen, something that looks like a kitchen. So when you are building your you for example you have a take a look at uh, I don't have, I don't have a graph, but this I'm standing still this way. Right? So the house, the main house of the parents should look so, so for example you're having a, you're having children. So you want to build you, you are living in some you are living in your parents' house, your land. Then you have found another land. So you don't need to build a house this way. And rather rather you either take it to the left first, then after six months, three months, is when that you will come and build it this way. So it is like you are removing you are removing your guru you are removing your house. Yeah, something like that. So um those are the things that usually happen. But the moment you go against it, you, you don't build that way and you go this way. I'm sure you'll die, all the family will, your family will start having some problems. So this this topic was very tense and was very loud. You, I, w- I wish I would continue, but um, those are the things that usually happen in Africa. Otherwise, uh, I'm, I'm wishing you a uh, happy new year. And wherever you are, Always remember that uh, Golden Boy loves you very much. And see you in the next episode. We are at episode 70.